Are you the superhero or are you the villain? Are you out there promoting world peace or are you out there promoting killing? Everybody always asks you what you want to be when you grow up and nobody ever asks you what you want to be remembered for. And I think that that's a little bit more important. What you want to be remembered for is what you really, what you want. That's what you want for yourself. The question of what do you want to be when you grow up, you know that you're basing your answer off your audience, basically. You're basing your answer off what you think society or who the fuck ever, your family or whatever, wants to see you as. It's like you're trying to give them the answer that they're defining. And you're searching and searching your brain to figure that out. And it's like, what do you really, really, nobody fucking knows what they want to be when they grow up. Like, I want to be grown up. That's what I want to be. I just want to be a grown up. Like, I want to actually feel like I am in my body and in my skin and happy as fuck to be there. Okay? Like, that's what I want. When, and, and if anybody's answer is anything besides that, they are fucking not, they don't know what they're talking about, okay? And if they do, you know what, I can't even say that. They might know what they want, okay? That might be what they want, but no, no, no. I gotta live by my truth there. Your answer needs to be that you don't know because if you think you know, that's when things are gonna bite you in the ass. It doesn't mean that you have to doubt yourself. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when it comes to you, all you really know and all you can really define is what you feel and think and see and taste and touch and smell in your immediate frame. You don't know who you're gonna be in two years, but there's a core element to you that should always be there and always be persistent, and that is the alignment with your highest version of yourself. It's that, that eye on the prize. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know what the prize is, but that you have the prize in sight all the time. Because when you deviate from that visual perspective, that's when it hurts. That's when, that's when it, it causes chaos because in order for there to be alignment, that means that there is other options that would be chaotic. That means that there is order. Order can only exist because chaos exists. But which one feels better? Like really, I mean, yeah, chaos does sometimes feel good, but I think that it's only usually at the end of that little like, you know, roller coaster that it actually feels really good you know, um, or at the very initial drop, you know, it's like <sighs> chaos is fun and all, but if I had to spend one way of doing things forever, I would definitely prefer it to be very orderly and equal and symmetrical and, and like just, you know, it's, it's predictable. It's like, okay, this is what's going to happen. Now, because this is going to happen and this is how things are gonna be and we know that this is what we want, then we can have fun with it. We can be creative with it. We can make it into different things. We can, you know, make different, make different patterns with the pattern. And that's, that's the beauty, that's the fun part. You know, the chaos is thrilling, but it's like painful, it fucking hurts. And it doesn't have to be, thrill doesn't have to be painful. Thrill can be, aligned like it can be like higher than you think you've already been like you know I believe in that I there is something in me that has never died that nothing on this on this earth has ever penetrated and if it tries to then you know what then I don't know I think it has tried to I think it's tried to very a lot like many 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 times <laughs> and it will continue to try to do that but that's the thing about it, is that it's not penetrable. You can't remove that, that heart, that thing that's there that's like, you know, 
I'm, I'm here always. It's the thing that is there always that is not temporary at all in any capacity. It cannot be temporary. So, knowing that that's there, knowing that that makes sense mathematically, I mean logically, thank God for math. <laughs> thank God for math, because it gives us the ability to actually conceptualize a very impossible principle to the universe. But how is it even possible to do that? I'm telling you, only the gods themselves can be aware of a godless world. That's only them, okay? Because, it, sorry, I'm going to pee. I have to pee a lot. Only can the gods themselves, the creators themselves, only can they consciously become aware of the tangibility or the lack thereof of a godless world. And, you know, frankly, I really prefer, I would really prefer to just move on from that. Like, like okay, we're aware of what this is now. So let's have fun with it now, right? Now the problem is that like some of us think that way and then some of us don't and then some of us do sometimes and then some of us have days where we forget and that's all part of it, you know? It really is. However, I believe that learning and reiterating, reiterating things, okay, rote learning, we know this, you know, put it to a song, <laughs> put it to, put it to a, a color and memorize it. We me memorize patterns and we memorize information using these types of devices and tools. And so, like, we've done this for ourselves. Like, we've done, we've, we have given ourselves information on a very, on a genetic level in ourselves, in our DNA, in our fucking chromosomes that is way more complex and we just, it's way more complex than us just like learning how, how to use our vocal cords. Like, you know, we, we, our parents teach us how to talk and to say words, but there's no way they can just teach you how to like literally use your vocal cords. Like your body just knows how to do that. Your body just, when you want to make a sound, something in your brain tells your throat muscles and everything, hey, do this. That is some godlike shit. Do you realize that? Like, you don't even have to think about it. You just have magical powers. You have the ability to literally talk. Like, I'm talking right now, and I'm intentionally doing it. I'm doing it because I want to do it. That's crazy. I get really excited about this because it's, like, unbelievably magical. And we take it for granted all the time. <laughs> I'm putting on makeup right now. You know, not because I want to be someone else, but because I want to just feel, I want to feel like my, I want to feel like a, my higher self. And it's not that I want to cover up or be someone else. It's that I want to feel like the person that I truly am inside. The person that every one of us truly is. And that doesn't mean we have to look the same because we all, we all really like look the same. Our source is the same, it's one thing. The fun part is the differences. The fun part is the variations, the colors, the lines, the, the movement that makes sense. Sensibility, equilibrium, rationality, health, movement, fluidity, flow, 
these things are are what we want. We don't want to, I don't even want to talk about the things we don't want because we already know what we don't want. And we don't need to focus on that anymore. We need to focus on what we do want because that's where the things will come from. They will come from the seeds of our thoughts. Right? Where else are they going to come from? They're not going to come from no other, like, they're not, it's not just going to appear. We've got to make this shit happen. And sometimes it does appear, or it seems to, but that's because we're really good at fooling ourselves. Hence the court jester. Haha. <laughs> okay. Peace out. Gotta go to work.